1984, Baltimore football rolled out of town via the moving truck. But tonight, July 16, 1994, Baltimore football is back. You couldn't have script this thing out the way it happened. I call it lightning in a bottle. It'll never happen in this day and age. Jim Spiros plunked down a $100,000 deposit for a CFL franchise. We were banned by the NFL. And the Canadian Football League with Jim came in with their arms open and said, we love you. The Baltimore team was the best football team of all time. For the first time in the 106-year history of the Canadian Football League, an American team will claim the Great Cup. But then when that announcement came and it was just like pulling the stopper out of the bathtub, nobody cared. That'd be awesome. Okay. That'd be awesome. Um, hello, baby. What's your name? Oh, I can't remember you. Oh, you look really yeah. Give me a hug. Oh, man. <laughs> Good to see you, Where are you at now? Yeah. I'm in Florida. Man. Florida? What are you doing in Florida? I'm in Florida. 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 I'm in a reunion of football players who were scattered to the wind after an historic run. Glad to be back. The Baltimore Stallions, the first and only American team to win the Grey Cup. All summoned to suburban Baltimore by team owner Jim Spiros. Does he look like he can play right now? Till you hit him. I mean, yeah. 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 Man, you yeah. Hit me. I got two players yeah. in me and they all the way. <laughs> yeah. I want to tell every player the effort you all made to do this. It means a heck of a lot to me. And this is your bond, man. Spiros and his team are here to mark an anniversary, but more importantly, to find a semblance of closure. Please welcome back the 1995 Grey Cup MVP and CFL Hall of Famer, Tracy Hand. Would you welcome the one and only Alfred Swack Tayton, the CFL's all time leading rusher, Mike Pringle. It's not a fairy tale. This really happened. And one guy made it happen, and he's our host tonight. Welcome, Jim Spiro. Pro football left Baltimore in 1984. Colts owner Robert Ursay ordered in the moving vans in the middle of the night and headed for Indianapolis. Fans here were attached to the Colts and their glorious history. Having their team ripped away was not only painful, it was an insult. But nine years later, they still wanted the NFL back. In 1993, the NFL expanded, and Baltimore was a finalist city. Charlotte, we understood. Jacksonville pissed us off. So everybody's really angry at the NFL at this time. And then here comes Jim Spiros. I'd had some success in business. I said, you know what? If I can get the right people uh, together, I think I can pull this off. Pass drilled over the middle for Goddard. Yes, for the first time this season, the Gold Miners have scored a point. In 1993, the CFL launched a grand experiment, expansion to the United States. God keep our land. When the league looked to add new American franchises, up stepped Maryland businessman Jim Spiros. 34-year-old former Clemson football player who was prepared to sell a dream. Oh, wow. You know, here, here comes energy. It was like a tornado hitting. He was everywhere all at once. It was like a pinball. He wanted to do everything. Let's do it now. Let's do it right. You remember when uh, we won the first game in Toronto and he came to the locker room and he did the split? Y'all remember that? <laughs> After we beat Toronto, he spiked the ball yeah. and he did a split. And I'm going, he did a split? <laughs> Is that the stretch coach? You got a stretch coach? That's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> no, he's the owner. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> By early 94, Spiros had an expansion franchise, a future Hall of Fame coach, and a lease for historic Memorial Stadium. 
Now it was time for a name. The name will be the Baltimore Colts. The minute we named them the Baltimore CFL Colts, it got national attention. And it um, and didn't take long. Three months later, the NFL was uh, suing me for infringement rights. I just want people to know here today that we're going to pursue the name. I want you to stay tuned, and I'm not going to be intimidated by the National Football League. Baltimore wanted to be known as the CFL Colts, but the NFL has laid claim to the name, so just call them the Baltimore CFLers. Joe Washington and I called 23 games for a team that didn't have a name. 23 games for the Baltimore. You couldn't even say V because it sounded dumb. A court injunction has prohibited Spiros from using the name Colts on anything, forcing him to make some embarrassing last-minute deletion. You're all invited. It's so exciting. It's the CFL. The name battle played into Spiros's hands perfectly. By leading a fight against the NFL, he produced a tidal wave of support for the new CFL club. Just like in 1984, a symbolic moving van backs up to the field. A decade later, football is back, Baltimore. It was like, okay, hey, maybe this might be fun. You know, it's pro football. It's not the NFL, but screw the NFL. That's our horse. He caught the horse with no name, but it's our horse. Oh, he's going to go all the way. These people have been without football for all this time, and you could see it in people's faces. They were glowing. Baltimore CFL stand for Baltimore Colts Football Live. The turnstiles just kind of did this, you know. Open in the end zone, touchdown. Oh, in the backfield, and Mike Pringle is in for the touchdown. Baltimore was an instant Grey Cup contender, in part because they weren't forced to dress a quota of Canadian players. And that abundance of American talent propelled them to the 1994 Grey Cup where they lost by a swing of a foot. This is it for the Great Cup victory. Pasaglia's kick is up. It's good! A few months after the Great Cup, Spiros lost his battle with the NFL over the name Colts. The team was renamed the Stallions, but he wasn't done fighting the NFL. Every passing month, there was some other team, whether it was Tampa Bay, whether it was Oakland Raiders with Al Davis. Somebody was really using Baltimore as a stocking horse that they were going to relocate the team here. Unaware that wheels were turning that would ultimately usher in the return of the NFL to Baltimore, the Stallions were on a mission to win the 1995 Grey Cup. We were so together, we were so much on the same page and everybody going in the same direction. That was a perfect storm. Here's Mike Pringle. Through the arms of Newby, and Pringle will score! What a run by Mike Pringle! If you lined up against Baltimore, chances are you're going to have a busted lip. And, you know, and we just kind of reveled in that. Carolina's under pressure, can't get it away. Sacked by Alfred Payton. We had the best kicker, the best punter, the best long snapper. We had the best line. We had the best quarterback, we had the best running back, we had the best defense, we had the two best pass rushers, we had the best, we had the best of everything. But ultimately, because of our success, the NFL was coming back here to Baltimore, and there wasn't enough room for two teams. Coming up on Sports Center, a stray NFL franchise turns up a long way from home in Baltimore. Sorry, but every dog has their day. I am deeply, deeply sorry. In early November, with the Stallions thundering into the CFL playoffs, Cleveland Browns owner Art Modell delivered a blindside hit that knocked the franchise cold. The Browns are indeed coming to Baltimore. The money, the 70 million relocation fee, the 240 million given for the stadium, he had no choice but to do what he did. And uh, um, unfortunately for us, it affected our outcome. We saw a lot of sponsors and people start jumping off of going into the playoffs. We didn't have as big a crowds. People were talking about the NFL. And, um, and it almost became a little bit of like, uh, hey, we'll show you. We deserve to be here. 
they make the announcement two weeks before we even play the Grey Cup. That distraction never affected the players. Canada versus America with the Grey Cup on the line. We're going to go get those guys. And we're going to run the ball. We're going to hit them. 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 And man, oh man, did we, did we go so out there? Chris Wright, and here he goes. And see you later. This is when Ham is dangerous. He'll run it in for the touchdown. Well, the Baltimore Stallions are champions of the Canadian Football League. As Jim Sparrows, the owner, accepts congratulations. We're number one. Great Cup first down ever. Today, we're proud, we're part of the Canadian Football League, we're proud to be part of the Canadian Football League, and we will be part of the Canadian Football League for many years to come. I always say Jim Spiros was his own worst enemy. He created something here in Baltimore that the NFL was always looking over his shoulder and saying, hmm, I think we made a mistake. Two months later, the Stallions moved to Montreal becoming the reborn Alouettes. Unfortunately, we did too good of a job because the NFL came back and they're building a new stadium. So here, I think it's very important that I wanted to know um, that I can have a long-term commitment. I blame this on Spiros. They put on a great show. And I think if we weren't as successful, if we weren't as dominant as we were, the Ravens would have never come here. Best ever, baby. And no more like it. That's that ring. You see that ring? That's the first thing from Baltimore right there. We brought it back. You had a good thing here, didn't you? Oh. Good yeah. Sad thing. We couldn't come back and, and we can do it again. But well, you know what? And that's what tonight's here for. Tonight is we never properly got to celebrate no, our victory. Even though it's been 20 years. Um, no one's ever going to forget the Baltimore Stallion football team that came through Baltimore in 1994, 1995. It's in the history books. These players were special. These coaches were special. This front office, the people that worked for the organization were special. And the way the fans embraced the product. I mean, where do you get 35,000 people in the United States to watch Canadian football? This was, to me, the greatest thing I've ever done in my life. And I will carry this for the rest of my life. And I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You had the banner above you that said the words best ever. Tell me why you think this is the best CFL team ever. Well, in 20 years, I have a true time to reflect. If you look at the caliber of players that we had, all-stars, Hall of Famers, guys that went on to play in the National Football League, I would line that team up with any team ever in the Canadian Football League. I don't think there's been ever a better team assembled.